Parallax scrolling has been a staple for developers, looking to add that extra wow factor to their websites for years. It's specially common on award-winning sites, where you'll often see Parallax image scroll animations paired with smooth scroll libraries. While there are plenty of tutorials showing how to create these animations with vanilla JavaScript, I noticed there aren't many that dive into achieving this effect with Next.js. To give you an idea of what we are building, I've set up a simple page with a few sections and images. As you scroll, you can see the images move at a slightly different speed than the content above, creating that signature parallax effect. In this video, I'll walk you through how to apply this animation to your images and make it work perfectly with the smooth scroll library Lenis. If you find this helpful, don't forget to like the video and consider subscribing if you haven't already. For those who want to unlock the source code, it's available through the Pro membership and today is the last day to grab the Black Friday deal. 50% off your first billing period. The discount code is mentioned in the description. Alright, let's jump into the code. To save some time, I've already set up a fresh Next.js app using create next step. Let's clean up the boilerplate so we have a fresh slate to work with. First, head over to the globals.css file and clear out all the default styles. Next, open the page.module.css file and remove everything there as well. After that, Make sure to remove the default classes applied to the body in the layout.js file. Finally, let's strip down the content in page.js. I'll replace the default code with a simple div that has a class name app. Before we dive into the code, let's set up the assets we'll need for the page. I'll start by creating a new folder named portraits inside the public folder. This is where I'll add all the images we'll be using for this project. Once the images are in place, we are ready to start writing the HTML for our sections. Just to keep things simple, we'll dump everything on this page for now. You can move things around later as needed. We are going to create 5 sections, Hero, Projects, About, Banner and Footer. Let's go through them step by step. Starting with the Hero section, I am adding an image that will act as the background. All images will be wrapped in a div with the class name image. This is important because we'll hide overflow on the wrapper and animate the translate y property to create the parallax effect. So make sure to always wrap your images this way. I'm also adding a navigation bar with a few placeholder text elements. These aren't strictly necessary but help the page look complete. Next, the project section. I'm adding another image to serve as the background, again wrapped in an image div. I am also including some placeholder text inside a div with the class name projects brief to balance the layout. The layout will be divided into two columns. In the first column, I am adding another image which will also have the parallax effect applied. In the second column, I am listing a few projects. Each project will have a title and some placeholder text underneath. For now, I am adding four projects with slightly different content for variety. The about section will be also divided into two columns. The left column will have some placeholder text to serve as an introduction. The right column will contain an image which I am wrapping in a container for better control over its size. The banner section will follow the same pattern. I am adding a background image here along with some placeholder content on top. This includes a couple of paragraphs, a heading and a button. Finally the footer, this section is divided into two columns as well. The left column will have some text elements and a wrapper to simulate navigation links. The right column will include more text and an image which will also have the parallax effect applied for consistency. And that's it for the structure. Let's move on to the CSS to style these sections. First, we reset all the default styles by removing margins and padding from all elements and setting their box sizing to border box. For the HTML and body, set their width and height to cover the full viewport, use a dark background color and the font family is set to New Montreal. 
images are said to have an absolute position with their width and height filling the parent container completely. We are also using object fit set to cover, ensuring the images scale proportionally. Adding a will change property helps to make animation smoother during the parallax effect. The image wrapper will also have an absolute position with its overflow hidden to confine the parallax animation within this section. For the headings, style them with the font and a font size of 80 pixels. Paragraphs are styled with uppercase text, a smaller font size of 14 pixels and with a clean line height. Buttons are styled with the uppercase text, a background color to contrast against the dark page. They are slightly rounded for a modern touch and have no borders or outlines. Each section takes up the full viewport width and height and is set to relative positioning to act as a container for its content. The navigation bar is centered using absolute positioning and styled as a flex container to evenly space out the navigation items. In the project section, extend its height to 125% of the viewport to fit additional content. This section is styled as a flex container with some spacing between its elements. The project's brief is positioned at the center of the section with its text styled to stand out clearly. Each column in the project section is defined for a specific role. The project's cover takes up half the section height and holds the background image while the project's list is set up as a column layout with the centered text and some spacing between the project items. The about section follows a split column layout with a background color. One column contains centered placeholder text for the introduction while the other holds an image wrapped in a container for better control over size. For the banner section, center the content both horizontally and vertically. The banner copy text includes a bold heading styled in uppercase along with a couple paragraphs and a button. Finally, the footer is divided into two columns. The first column contains text elements and links styled to look like a simple navigation menu. The second column includes additional text and an image. The styling forms the foundation for the page layout and prepares it for animations. Next, let's use Lanis to add a smooth scrolling experience to our project. First, ensure you have installed the Lanis library. At the top of your component, add the use client directive. This defines the component as a client component, allowing it to use state, effects, and event listeners. Then import React Lanis from the Lanis library. With that done, wrap the entire app inside the React Lanis component. This component creates a Lanis instance and provides it to all of its children through context. Once that's set up, you can see the smooth scroll effect has been activated on our page. Now let's move on to adding the parallax effect. Inside the app folder, I'll create a component called Parallax Image. This makes it reusable throughout the project whenever we need a parallax effect. It's going to be a simple React component, so I'll start by adding a use client directive to define it as a client component. Next, I'll import use ref and use effect from React since we'll use these to handle DOM interactions and effects. I'll also import the use Lanis hook from the Lanis library, which will help us hook into the scroll behavior. Once the component is set up, I'll go to the main page and import the parallax image component there. I'll replace all the native image tags with the parallax image component, letting it pass the source and alt values as props. You can see all the standard image tags have been replaced with the parallax image component, making them ready for the parallax effect. Now back in the parallax image component, we start with a utility function called lerp. This function allows us to interpolate smoothly between two values using a factor, creating a smooth animation effect. We'll grab the props passed to it. 
I'll create a reference for the image using useRef which will allow us to manipulate its DOM properties directly. For the initial setup, I've added a style to the image with the will chain set to transform and an initial transform of translate y 0 and scale of 1.25. This gives the image a slight zoom effect to start with, setting the stage for the parallax animation. Inside the parallax image component, I'll define a few references. Bounds will store the position of the image relative to the viewport. Current translate y will track the current vertical translation of the image. Target translate y will hold the desired translation value based on scroll position. Ref ID will store the ID of the animation frame, allowing us to manage the animation loop. Next, I'll use a use effect to handle the bounds calculation and animation logic. First, we define a function called update bounds. This calculates the position of the image relative to the entire page. It uses getBoundingClientRect function to get the image's dimensions and updates the bounds whenever the window is resized. We then set up the animate function. This function continuously updates the current translate y value, smoothly moving it toward the target translate y value using the love function. If there is still a noticeable difference between the current and target values, it updates the image's transform property to apply the parallax effect. The animation loop is managed using request animation frame function. Both update bounds and animate are initialized when the component bounds. The window resize listener and animation loop are cleaned up when the component unmounts to avoid memory leaks. Finally, we use the use lanis hook to synchronize the parallax effect with the lanis smooth scroll. On every scroll event, we calculate the relative scroll position of the image using its bounds and update the target translate y value. This value is then used by animate function to adjust the image's position dynamically. At this point, the parallax effect is fully functional. You can see the images now move smoothly with the scroll, creating a dynamic and engaging visual experience. So that was it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.